All right, today we're gonna to get a little bit more practical and talk about how to set up Envision Sync to work with Sketch. So go ahead and log in to Envision. And then once you're logged in, you will actually need to download the Envision Sync app. So up here behind this lovely obscure icon, which is nine little squares, you will click on that and then you get desktop sync. Now what we're going to focus on today is not Dropbox or Google Drive sync, but actually this Envision Sync for Mac app. So go ahead and download that. It should be pretty self-explanatory to install, so let's just assume you've installed it. And so once you've installed it, you just start it up and you'll be prompted to log into your Envision account. A little tip when you hit sign in it kind of loads for a second and then it sits like this which is actually the signed in state so this is good okay so now what you want to do is you want to start a project in Envision and we'll just make a new project uh, for web and we'll call it testing Envision sync Cool, so once we have that project created in Envision, what will happen is if we jump into our Finder, and what you'll see is on the left-hand side here, along with your cloud storage such as Google Drive and Dropbox, you'll also have a little folder called Envision. So this is where your Envision sync kind of lives and all of your projects live. So the way this is structured is you can see your accounts at the highest level. So we'll go into my normal account. Then we can see our project, which is a folder. And then inside there you have screens and assets. So screens are just kind of PNGs or JPEG outputs of your screens. And the assets are where things like fonts and images and source files live. So a source file will actually be where our sketch file will live. And then based on your artboards and what they're named, they will actually sync from this folder into your screens as JPEGs or PNGs. And we'll see how that works now. So if we jump into sketch, which I have open here, and I have a new document. So what I'll do is I'll create some artboards here. So I'll create one, two, three artboards. So we'll call this page one, page two, and page three. Now what we'll do is we will save this and we'll call this testing and vision sync as well, just to keep everything clean. And we'll chuck this into my account, into that project folder, into assets and into source files. So that's where you want to save your sketch file. Now what will happen is, what I hope will happen, is that page one, page two and page three will sync into our Envision project as three separate screens. And they should just be blank white screens at this stage. So if we jump into our testing, Cool, that actually works. So we have page one, two, and three here now. So we'll put them in order. So that has synced through. Now, this is where you can get a little bit tricky. What you can do is you can actually, if we jump back into Sketch now, if we want to add a new page, but we don't actually want it to sync up to Envision, we can put a little hyphen at the front of it. So if we call this page hyphen page four, or minus page four, then that won't actually sync into Envision. It will ignore it. But if we carry on here and add page five, and we won't put a hyphen, we'll put page five, what we should see is that through the magic of Envision Sync, we should see a new page in our document here appear called page five, but not page four. Perfect. So we have four pages, one, two, three, and five. Now, Let's draw some rectangles because we know UX designers love gray rectangles. So the, the trigger for Envision Sync to kind of start syncing is every time you save the sketch file. So nothing will sync unless you've actually made changes and saved them. So what we have now is you can see our pages. Now what I'll do now is I'll actually remove the hyphen from page four and we will put a red circle on this page just so we can really clearly see which one has been synced and we'll save that we'll wait for it to sync and then we should jump back into envision and we should fingers crossed see a red circle appear cool so 
Another little trick to be aware of that uh, a lot of people kind of get caught up with is if I actually call this page, page three, if I rename that page four, which means we now have, as you can see here, two pages named page four. The way Envision Sync works with Sketch is that it takes every unique artboard name and creates a new page or a new screen in Envision based on those artboard names. And it only takes unique names. So the naming convention is very important when you're using Envision Sync with Sketch. Every page needs to be a unique name. So if you, if you can see here, we have two page fours and we actually just renamed this page here with the rectangles. So what the way it works is the page which was actually created most recently. So even though we renamed page three to be page four, page four, the original page four was actually created after that page three, which is now page four. It gets very confusing as you can imagine. So, so what actually happens here is that this page on the right with the large red circle is page four and this page four, which was page three is actually now ignored because the newer page four overrides the one we've just renamed. So my, my kind of tip here is be very conscious and aware of when you're naming and how you're naming your pages or artboards in sketch, because that is the kind of most common mistake people make and the most common way that people get tripped up and fed up with Envision Sync. I've seen it happen countless times and I've been caught out myself and I sit there just thinking, why the hell is it not syncing? Like I've done everything right and it's not syncing, it won't work. And then you realize, oh crap, I actually had a duplicate artboard name somewhere else in my project. So that is like a huge gripe that I have, but also if you can get over that hurdle, it's not too difficult to kind of deal with. So, so let's rename this page here now, which is page four to page three, just to get super confusing. And what we should see happen is actually page three and page four should now switch. So page three will have the red circle, page four will have the rectangles. We should see this happen in our Envision project any second now. Boom, didn't take too long at all. So another trick to be aware of, if you remember, we can exclude pages. So if we exclude page one now, after the fact that it has already been created in our Envision project. So we have put a little minus here and we can, let's say we can change how this looks. So we'll, we'll just do this so that it's obviously different to the original page one. But what that will actually do is it just will ignore all changes to page one. Now it won't remove page one from our project. The page one in our project will simply be the last time that we had a page called page one. And ever since we put the little hyphen or the, the, the minus in front of that page one, it has simply just ignored it. So it hasn't removed it. It's just now ignoring it. So we still have a page one in our project. So that is another little thing that people get, kind of tripped up on is they, they have all these pages that aren't actually being used because they created them, saved them, and then they excluded them and they've synced in before they've excluded them. So another trick to be aware of this kind of unique naming convention and excluding pages and including pages can actually be really useful when you're working, when you're working in sketch and you are working with kind of a fluid prototype that you want to kind of continuously grow and and change and adapt. So if we take page one, we'll put it back to actually being called page one, and then we'll make a few duplicates of page one. So we'll make three duplicates. So we have four page ones. And what we'll do is we will exclude all of these copies. Cool. So we have page one and then three copies of page one. Now what we can do is we can basically do a bunch of exploration on these. So we'll make this one uh, we'll make it some three large ones. Cool. We'll give these ones all rounded corners. And we will make this one a lovely triangle. Cool. So now you can see we actually have like a bunch of exploration here happening on page one, for example. 
and we can talk to our friends and colleagues and get some feedback and perhaps they think, oh, you know what, the triangle is actually pretty unique and pretty cool. So now we want the triangle to become page one in our prototype. So all we need to do is really simply call it page one and then exclude the old page one, just like so. And now what we actually have is a new page one, as simple as that. So if we jump back into Envision, we will hopefully see page one become a triangle. Ta-da! So look, the thing to remember with Envision Sync, the only real nuance or thing to kind of keep in mind when you're using Envision Sync is page names or artboard names in your sketch file. 99 times out of 100, if you're having trouble with a particular page not syncing into your Envision file, then I can almost guarantee you that you've got a duplicate page name somewhere. So always start there. Anyway, that's the absolute basics of Envision Sync. If you have any questions or comments or concerns about using Envision Sync for your own projects, then feel free to reach out and I will help in any way I can. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. P.S. I would really appreciate any feedback on the format of these videos. I am trying to kind of tailor the content toward people who have been engaging with me and giving me feedback. So if you'd like to see me take this channel in a certain direction, then please leave me feedback because it would be really appreciated. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you.